Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Nisha Singla and in today's session we are going to talk about prop types and default props in React. In previous video we have already talked about what are props and how to use that and we have also learned how to pass props from your parent component to child component. So if you haven't covered the previous video yet, I have provided the link in the description below as that video is very important to understand the today's session. So Please make sure that you are comfortable with the concept of props. Now before proceeding with the video, I want you to please subscribe to my channel if you want to update yourself on React and any another JavaScript based framework or library. Because in my playlist you can check it out, I have created so many other videos that will help you in your interviews as well. Now without any further ado, let's get started. So in my previous session, I had created one link component and to make this component dynamic, what we have done, we have passed some data from the parent component so that we can reuse the same component at different places with some different data. So if you notice in the app.js component that is a parent component, I have called this link component multiple times with some different different data and we have passed the data from my app component to the link component with the help of props. So here this link component is taking two props, the one is title and another is the content. But now we need to understand like have you checked like what type of value you are getting inside your component through prop? No. We didn't check, right? But then also everything is working fine. So it's totally upon us whether we validate the data we're getting using prop inside a component or not. But as the application size increase or for very large application, it is always a good practice to validate the data that you're getting through props because it will help you in the debugging and it will also avoid the future bugs that could come in your application. So now let's check what React documentation says about props. So here I can type prop types and let's see. So it is also mentioned like as your app grow, you can catch a lot of bugs with type checking, right? For some application, you may use JavaScript extension like Flow or TypeScript to type check your whole application. But for that, you have to install these packages, right? So React has given some inbuilt packages to do that thing and that we can do with the help of prop types. So complete documentation is given here. I will come to this documentation again to explain you further. I will recommend to go through with this documentation and read because everything is explained very clearly here. And you just need to focus on this note as well like react prop type has moved into different package since version 15. Before version 15 react prop type was inbuilt to installation. You don't need to do any separate installation for that. But now it is moved to different package. So we have to install this prop type package manually. Okay, if you are using React version 15 and above that. So let's check the version of our applications as we are using the latest version. So definitely we are using package above or equal to 15, right? Definitely we have to install this prop type manually. So let's move to a project and you can open your package.json file and here you can see this React version, okay? So now it as it is 17th version, so it means we have to install prop type and you can see here we don't have prop type package, right? So first step to, in, to use prop type, we have to install this package and we know how to install any package using npm command. So if you are not comfortable with how to use npm command, so you can check out th that video also in my channel. I will add the link in the description. So make sure you are in the correct folder. And now you can say npm install or you can say npm i that is also fine and the name of your package package name is prop types. So it should install prop type package to my package or json file. All the validation rules regarding your props will be inside this package. So it is mandatory to have this package before using any validation on your props. So it is showing like it is done prop ties 15.8 so let's check that one yes here it is so now my application has this prop type package so now it means we are good to go we are okay to use this prop type now let's see how you can use prop types in your project because the first step is done you have to install if you are using react version greater than 15 so we have already installed our package 
now my link component has these props title and content so definitely i need to mention my validation here like title should be of type string or it should be a number or, or it should be a string right so let's see how you can do that move back to the documentation and check here so as we know that whenever you want to use any package first of all you need to import that so this is the same rule you will it will go here to use this prop type you need to import this from this prop type package now this prop type property will hold all the validation so how you need to do you just need to say your component name dot prop types this prop types property will hold a object that will contain all the validation rules so here it would be an object and then you just need to mention your prop name and what kind of value it can hold so name is a property name or it's a prop name that this greeting component is taking and prop types this one dot string okay so now there could be lots of other validation rule which can be used depending on your component so let's first do the same thing in our component and then we will see what all other validations we can add okay there's a lot of validation rules that can be given or can be used to define your prop types so move to your component and here as i told you first of all you need to import that so how you can do that we just need to say import prop types from package name was prop types so once this import is done all you have to do just mention your component name so my component name is link and here you need to use this property prop types and it will hold a object and here you just need to mention the rules or what kind of data your props can take so here we have two props title and content so let me define first first of all for title so title and to define the type you just need to use this prop types and it could be of type string as it is an object so you just need to say key value and comma separated for different prop so now title should be of type string and as of now content property is also of type string and you are done so this is the way you have to define the type for your prop when you see it on browser you will not see any difference still the output will remain same but now let's do something wrong so that we can see whether this validation are actually working or not so when you move to your app component because from there we are calling this component and whenever this link component will call from so many different places there is a huge chances that someone can pass some different type of data like for an example let, let me try like i said content id should be of type string let me pass this content as a number so suppose i have passed this number here and save the changes and again move to a browser so now here you can see we are getting a warning and the warning is very clear to understand warning says that failed prop type invalid prop content of type number supplied to link expected string see how well this error is given right it is very clear it's saying like the link component you are passing a prop with the name of content with the type of number ideally it was expecting string right so this way if any of other person in your team is consuming this component and by mistake if they pass some wrong data they can easily get a warning in the console but still your code will work fine okay it will not break your code until unless you don't have any conditional checks where it completely break your code but ideally it will never break your code it's just for the development it is basically for the developer to write a better code so that future bugs can be avoided so now we can clearly say no it cannot accept string idly it should be a so here instead of passing number you have to pass a string so this is how your validations are working as of now this component doesn't need data, any other kind of data but let me show you what if i want to pass some another type of data because in the previous example we have just passed string so move back to this documentation and here let's check this this one the way we have passed string right similarly you can also define your prop types with these types it could be an array it could be a boolean it could be a function number object or symbol so if your component is taking another element then you can mention element type 
or sometime you want to pass certain type of object maybe you want to pass one either this or that then you can say one of this type so there are different ways of passing the type you just need to try as per your project need so let me try with few more example suppose i have this const users and now i want to pass this users data also so what you can do you can create your prop here and you can pass this object users and same object you can pass to let's leave for this one now move back to the link component and now this component is also taking one more prop users as of now users i am not using if you want you can just print using json.stringify so that i am just displaying that on our screen so when you check it on a browser you will see the data is displaying so now here you can say users prop types of array because it is an array right so now if instead of array i pass to this prop maybe some boolean value so can you see this one invalid prop users of type boolean supply to link expected array so this error is very clear easily can be understand by anyone right so it means this is wrong you have to pass a array to this one users so this is how you can pass your prop type you just need to remember how to define that right so this documentation you can use for your reference okay this is very helpful because it is very well explained here how you can pass different kind of data now this is about prop type now let's move to one more concept related to props only so i will explain in this video itself and that is the default prop as the name suggests default prop means you can also pass some default value right sometimes what happens is your component can accept the value of your prop either from the root component like this one when we are calling this app component from here but sometimes all props are not meant to be sent by your parent component sometimes you make it optional if parent component is not passing then you can also set some default value inside your component itself and that is a concept of default props so when you check the documentation it is also similar way right the way we have used prop types similarly you just need to mention your component name and default props it is also object so you can pass some default value you don't need to install any separate package for that you can directly use this one default prop as a static property so if i say here how you define you can say link dot default props and you can pass like this and here you can define any prop as a default prop so here if, if i say users if i want to make it as a default prop so if no one if no users data pass from the parent component then by default it will take a test user one as a default prop and let's check this one so as you can see i'm calling this component three times so maybe three times out of two time i'm passing users component but for the third call there is no users prop but to make my link function work i need the users prop so in that case you can define or you can pass some default prop like this as well like we accept uh, default parameters in function similarly so when you check this one so can you see here for the first two it is passing users from parent component but for the third one it is passing as a test user one so this is how you can pass your default prop but validation rule will again work if i pass string value as a default prop so check this one you will still get a error like uh, this uh, link component has one users prop which is expecting a type of array but you are passing a string okay so validation rule will still apply doesn't matter the props are coming from parent or you are passing it as a default props one more point to remember like i have said like title content and users i have defined the type and for users i have set the default value uh, but now suppose i am not passing title for one of my component call so if you check this one you will not get any error right i have just defined the type like this title should be of type string but if we are not passing then it is not checking that one so if you want to check that also like you have to pass it is a mandatory prop then you can mark it as required so when you do something like this in that case title prop is mandatory you have to pass it 
So in that case now when you run this one it, it will give you a warning for that also like the title is marked as required for link but its value is undefined. So this way you can also make sure that uh, sometime what happens that certain props are mandatory you have to pass that otherwise the logic that you have written in, inside your component might break. So to keep that in mind you need to define like what all props are required and what all props are optional. So here the title prop is required but the content and users are optional. Ideally what is the best practice whenever you use any optional prop you should define its default value in the default props because definitely we are using these props in the component. So it might break so it's always good to give some default value if it is not marked as required. So for content as it is not required so I can pass maybe empty string or some default value otherwise it would be undefined. So here we have to pass title so that we can get rid from this error. So this is about prop types and default props I hope th this is very straightforward and easy concept it just to make your component more clean and error free and it also makes your debugging easy because it's very easy to understand what type of data we are using inside your component. You just need to look at the prop type and you can find out what all props my component is taking and out of them which one is required and which one is optional and which one is using default props that's it. Second point to remember now prop type package moved to a separate package so you have to install it manually if you are using react version greater than or equal 15. So this is all about prop types that helps you to apply uh, validation on your props and default props so that you can pass some default props if it is not passing from the parent component. So this is all about props types and default props. I hope today's session is clear and I will see you in the next video till then take care and keep learning.